I just got back from Norfolk. My room is a state because I've just had a load of exciting things come through. I'm gonna make a vlog about it and you'll love it. But for now, I'm gonna talk about Norfolk video from yesterday and I'm gonna go through the cinematography of it. So today's video is all about shot selection. So I've been in Norfolk this weekend. It's been lovely. A chance to actually get away, see some of the wildlife over there. Shot selection is one of the most important things you can do, particularly if you're in a tight time frame. You need to think about what can you get in that one little moment. The main thing I want to get across is I wasn't trying to decide what to shoot. I was trying to decide what I don't want to show. So thinking about it in the other way made me frame things how I did. Right, first shot. The first shot I went with, I thought I want to have a bit of intrigue. So what I did was frame it in a way that didn't reveal much of the face, didn't reveal much of anything, which is why there's a lot of headroom at the side and it's a side on shot. But also, straight away you see that she's there taking a photograph. So you get a sense of where you are, of what's about to happen, but you don't know anything about the character. And that's where the intrigue comes into it. Same again with shot two, I was trying to just get a sense of the atmosphere of the day. So you see the wind blowing the hair, but you don't see anything else. We're trying to keep that mystery. The whole thing was shot on 24105, and what I was doing here was punching in for a nice bit of depth and compression that you get from going to 105. If you take the exact same frame at 24 to 105, it'll look very different because of the way the lens compresses it depending how far zoomed in you are. So for this shot, I was zoomed quite far in, not revealing too much. If you're on a corporate job and you know, you've got to make a video, loads of b-roll of someone, get loads of landscape shots or loads of building shots. That way, you get a little idea of the environment they're in. The main purpose behind this shot I wanted something beautiful and pretty with a bit of movement. So that's why I'm shooting into the sun to get a nice bit of flair. Suddenly it's kind of gone from a slow establishing into a bit more about the character, a little bit more about where she's going. And you know, if you can get a ratio of like shots that you need and shots that look stunning, then that's how you get a great film. All of these shots are based around the idea of I don't want to see too much. I don't want to reveal everything that's going on. I don't want to reveal exactly where we are, but I want to capture that environment as much as I can in the feel. You can think that way, then, then you're going to reverse engineer it. And before you know it, you've got shots that you would have never thought of because you're not trying to think, how can I show that? You're thinking, how can I not show that and still make this interesting? I hope you're learning something. This forms part of a sequence. So the next couple of shots are based in a new environment. And I want to demonstrate how she got there without just having a, a massive wide shot of the building. This shot, where I'm just kind of going near the stairs, you know that it's a building. You know that she's going to be going up the stairs because in the previous shot, I've looked from down there. So that's the other one. You need to think in terms of a sequence, which is why if you can think about the edit, you're going to do yourself a favor. Think in terms of sequences of what you need and you're getting there. If I was on a fiction film, I would always make sure I got a wide as an establishing shot. And then I got my mids and my close ups. But having that wide, if you don't have that, suddenly you won't know where you are. And you might, you know, you might have two different scenes, but if you can't establish the difference between them, the audience is going to be very confused. So we've been walking around in a field. I'm going to be cutting to my mum indoors. I need something to demonstrate she's gone there, which is why I have this shot here you get a lot of depth in the shot. You've got a foreground of the arm, you've got the main section of the um, leaflet, let's go with leaflet, and then you've got a little bit of blurred background by the window. I think the glasses are really nice thing to focus on because they're, they're narrow and they're very precise and elegant, but with that bit of glass, light can pass through and you get new shades of light. So in terms of a shot selection, thinking about not necessarily just the person, but the things that define them or the things that you can shoot that are a bit different, Glasses are a good one. You know, a watch could be another one. Any terms of like jewelry. This one is, is something to, to think about, that you can throw the focus to the background and still have your foreground relevant. You, you know, I've already established in the previous shot, you know she's looking through binoculars. But by having the focus on the background, you're, you're beginning to capture that sense and think outside the box. You don't just want to be shooting your subject the whole time. If you're filming someone in a location, is the focus them? Is it the location? Is it a mixture of both? And do you need to try and capture both? That's the answer in case you weren't sure. And last but by no means least, we have the final shot where walking off into the distance, sun on the right, a nice bit of foreground in the front, and leaving enough room for text if I wanted to put it up. I've chosen to frame it this way 
so I have that option. That has drilled into me from like countless corporate videos. Having that thought in your head, for, again, for the edit. For every shot I choose is for the edit. How is it gonna work in the edit? That is how you choose your shots. You think about what you're trying to show, but then you think about what you're trying not to show, and you think about it in terms of the edit. So, what do I want the start of the film to be? I don't want to reveal too much, but I want to get a sense of the place. Let's get some nice shots where you don't actually reveal anything. You just get, ooh, what's this, what's that? Moving to the middle, let's get a little bit more of the pacing, a little bit more of the journey. Okay, where actually are we? And then at the end, let's get, and who is this person? in this place. Some shots you do want to pick just because they look nice. There's no harm in having a beauty shot. So I'm going to do a part two of this which covers movement and composition. So yeah, movement and composition. Um, that'll be maybe tomorrow, maybe later in the week. You'll have to watch and find out. Alright guys, see you tomorrow.